perfect. All right, Coach, question of the week comes from one of your YouTube subscribers. Uh -huh. When it comes to promoting from brown to black, what are you looking for? What am I looking for? So, yeah, some of it is the time put in. Wow. Time, time put in, like, uh, years-wise makes a difference because there's a lot to look for. Uh, for like a regular brown belt, right? Not like a competitor that's there training three times a, uh, a day. Because obviously they're gonna get there faster. Um, but the, like the, let's just call him the average brown belt. So what we're looking for is like his understanding of um, like multiple positions and understanding. It may not have to be like their quote unquote game, but like for example, like I don't do bear and ballers a lot, but I know how to dome and I know how to like at least at minimal you need to understand like some basic fundamentals of like bear and ball of, of spider guard, of de la Hiva, or of half, of deep half, at minimal. Uh, but even then, uh, the brown bots I wanted for our brown bots in particular. Going into black, they need to know more than just fundamentals. They need to know like like the details of everything, the transitions, what else they can do from that they get caught, um, you know, things like that. So they need to be well versed as well as in uh, takedowns. Hmm. So they should be able to like do them, apply them. Sometimes it's hard for everybody to do them live and hit them, so that's okay. But it doesn't mean that someone can't understand fully like positioning of the feet, positioning of the hips, like all of those details. details of the steps. Of, yeah, yeah. of takedowns, half guard, full guard, passing, mm -hmm. passing to the heel, passing. So it's like so much moves. That's why most brown belts takes, take some years to transition to black. In your opinion, do you think a brown belt should be sort of in a teaching position, whether formally or informally? Uh, and the reason why I ask that is because the, what you're talking about is like all the fine details and how do they, sh I mean, other than, than teaching it, how would you know that, you know, is uh, it like a it testing? Yourself. Drilling, drilling it and doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when asked, yeah, obviously someone in class, the, typically the, the, the lower belts always ask the higher belts. <clears throat> so if you're in class all the time, you're going to be explaining a lot. Mm -hmm. Like helping, whether it be your drilling partner that's a purple or a blue, doesn't matter who you're drilling with, you're always going to be like, well, when I drill, I always talking back and forth like, does it feel right? Does it, I did this wrong? I'll get, you know, they'll tell feedback. me something. Yeah, feedback back and forth. So if you're in class all the time, like a, like a strong real ground ball should be, and you're going to get that there. You don't necessarily have to teach, even though teaching helps. Being here in class all the time is going to help, you know, the process. It's going to help you understanding. Um, and for understanding too, like I'm talking about like teaching as well. It's like, because if you can explain it, that that's a good indicator that you really understand the position. Not just doing, not just applying. So applying the movement in life scenarios, one. Like understanding and walking someone through it is another. And then doing it too. Like all of those things play a role in like transitioning to black. You know what I'm saying? At least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I look for here. You know, and sometimes it takes three years, four years, five years. It's really up to the individual. Going back to that, going back to that time thing, when you were saying, let's say if you have a brown belt, let's say his second year in, and he's got all those things down. Yeah. Do you think that there's a, a time requirement? Yeah, aspect? Well, it's a lot of brown belts that, that train all the time, two, three times a day. Mm -hmm. Those guys can get in a year and a half, two years. Yeah. Easily. But that usually happens at the competition type schools because those type of guys compete all the time and they're always in the training room studying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Where the average practitioner who competes once, twice, three times a year, they'll be in there quite frequently. So, the, so the time that you're talking about is like mat time. 
math time, which equ which equates to which transitions into your time. Mm -hmm. You know, those active competitors that are just competing and drilling and training and sparring all the time, their mat time triples everybody else's where an average brown ball trains every day, hour and a half a day, yeah. maybe two. Yeah. Yeah. So that's You're looking why. at 10 hours a week as opposed to 30 hours a week. Yeah. yeah. Or even 20 hours a week, you know, yeah. two times a day. Yeah. You know, which is common. So that's why regular brown ball are... I don't want to say regular, but like, you know, you should take some time, you know, because that's what we look for anyway. Yeah.